Hi, my name is Roman Frick and I'm a reader in the Department of Philosophy, Logic and Scientific Method at the London School of Economics. My work centers around problems in the philosophy of physics as well as a general philosophy of science and today I want to tell you something about the new exciting research project I am I'm involved in. The project is concerned with climate modeling and the aim of those models is to forecast the climate 50 or 100 years from now and the philosophical questions are how good are these models, what do they do for us and are they really fit for the purpose for which they were designed. But before turning to climate models I want to say something about the philosophical motivations for this project. Science constructs models and theories to represent selected aspects or parts of the world. And we use these models and this theory to learn something about the systems for which they stand. For instance, when we want to investigate the solar system, we construct a model of the solar system that represents the solar system. And then by studying the model, we can learn facts about the system the model stands for. The question then is, how on earth can we learn something about the solar system by playing around with a model about it? In order to answer this question, it's good to first think a little bit about what we mean by a scientific model. A scientific model essentially consists of two components. First, there is a fictional scenario. When Newton modelled the solar system, he assumed that both the Sun and the Earth were perfect spheres, and he assumed that gravitational interaction would only take place between the Sun and the Earth, and no other um, objects in the solar system. Now, we know that these assumptions are not literally true, or to use some jargon, we know that the model we have has model error. The second element in a model is a mathematical formalism. So you use equations of motion to describe the entities in the model and to derive strict mathematical conclusions. So the question then becomes, how can a fictional scenario and a bunch of equations be used to instruct us about properties of something in the real world, in our example, the solar system? And the answer that emerged in the wake of Newtonian physics is, roughly speaking, something like the following. So if the assumptions we make in the fictional scenario are only a little bit off, then the conclusions we draw from our models are also a little bit off. More specifically, we modeled the sun as being spherical. Now, the real sun is not spherical, but it's close to spherical, and the same goes for the Earth. And for this reason, we can assume that the results we derive in the model also hold true of the solar system. And this assumption is, in fact, confirmed by astronomical observation. This method of modeling has worked very well and is widely used in many contexts. And more to the point, many climate scientists still use it today in trying to model the climate of the Earth. Now, unfortunately, and that's the first insight of the project, this cannot be done. Climate models are fundamentally different from Newtonian models of the kind we have just seen, and they demand a different modeling technique. Why and how are climate models different? The key to this question is chaos. Let me briefly explain to you what chaos is. Chaos is a property of the equations in the model. And if equations are chaotic, um, initial conditions that originally lie very close together can drift apart very, very quickly. Let me illustrate that with an example. Just make the following thought experiment. I mean, imagine that you have a copy of our world. It is an exact copy, 
but with one crucial difference, namely that the temperature in Victoria Station is one degree higher than in our world. Now intuitively we would think that if you look at this copy world a year or two from now, it should pretty much look the same as our world, because after all there was only a tiny difference. Now, this is false. This copy world can be very, very different. For instance, in the copy world, you could have had a huge thunderstorm that would never have occurred in our world here. So small differences can have huge effects. Well, now comes the punchline. The Newtonian way of modeling systems does not work if the system's equations are chaotic. If the equations are chaotic and you have only a little bit of model error in your model, then the real system and the model can behave in completely different ways and what you derive from the model need not at all hold true in the real system. Now, climate models, they are chaotic, so they do have these properties. And if we have model error in climate models, they fall prey of that problem. And no one believes that current climate models are in any way a realistic depiction or an exact depiction of the world's climate. There is model error, so there is that problem. And we can't simply use the Newtonian like for like rule, as you wish, um, to extrapolate findings in the model to the real world. I suppose that you would now like to know what other modeling strategy there is if we can't use the Newtonian one. And unfortunately, I have to disappoint you here. As of now, we don't know. That's exactly the question we're worrying about at the moment. That's of a subject of ongoing research I'm working on this question together with the climate modeling group here at the LSE and we hope to report something on that in the future.